If you live through the San Diego's devastating wildfires of 2003 and 2007, you've probably noticed the imprint they've had on our ecosystem. The impact is likely to grow as researchers predict the number of wildfires in the county will rise because of climate change. Researcher Phil Unit, a curator with the Natural History Museum in Balboa Park, and Matt Ron, an environmental scientist at SDSU, joins me today to explain the situation. And Phil, I'm going to start with you. Tell us right now what the effects so far have been of those two massive wildfires we had in California. The uh, coniferous forest on the Cuyamaca Mountains has been pretty much replaced by a chaparral made of Ceanothus palmeri. Uh, vast areas of uh, chaparral have uh, recovered, but then many of those were burned again in, in 2007. Uh, I've worked on studies of the effects of the fires on birds, and uh, we've seen many profound changes with uh, certain species decreasing, and, but others increasing, taking advantage of those burned areas. So there was certainly a huge environmental impact. What does the climate change, other than it gets hotter, uh, have to do with uh, increasing the prediction of wildfires like we saw in 2003 and 7 here in San Diego? Well, certainly as the uh, climate gets warmer, then that's uh, better for fires, uh, bad for those of us who don't want the fires. Uh, so uh, the frequency of fires is expected to increase as well as their intensity. Absolutely. There's been a, quite a bit of research on this. Numerous studies have uh, been going on on this. And I want to ask you, Matt, it sounds a little doomsday, like, oh, we're going to have more fires and they're going to be hotter. Do you agree with those predictions? And, and if you do, why? Well, yeah, I do agree with the predictions. One of the things that we've noticed is in the last 10 years, uh, half of the uh, the largest 20 wildfires in California's history have happened in the last decade. That is an alarming statistic, really. And so it helps us understand that into the future, if temperatures increase and precipitation patterns change, uh, we're likely to expect uh, uh, more frequent and more intense fires. When you say more intense, uh, fire's hot, it burns. What, what could be more intense? Well, it, it, a lot of it has to do with the type of vegetation. So uh, like Phil had mentioned, a uh, change in the vegetation type really can alter the, uh, the intensity of the fires. Um, but also the fuel moisture, the, the amount of moisture that a plant is able to hold um, will, will change over time as precipitation patterns change. And so that does alter the intensity of the fires and makes them a lot hotter. You have more dry trees, more dry bush, I'm assuming that's uh, so it burns yeah. a little hotter and faster. Now, you researched a phenomenon called a positive feedback loop. Can you explain that to us? Well, it's pretty well documented that as the uh, frequency and intensity of fires increases, uh, what you have is a change in your ecosystem and uh, this sort of climate feedback loop. So as the uh, climate becomes hotter and drier, you have a more frequent fire, which leads to an increase in carbon dioxide emissions, of course, which are related to climate change itself. Uh, that leads to this sort of nice circular positive feedback loop that a lot of scientists are concerned about. This is exacerbated quite a bit by a change in the vegetation type, and especially the uh, change that we're witnessing in Southern California of uh, invasive species and grasses. Right, and in my understanding, Phil, you'd mentioned that the, the forest, especially in the Cuyamaca, is being re replaced with more chaparral types of things. How is the recovery going uh, otherwise? Are we seeing species come back? Are we seeing um, new flora grow? H how's it been going since 2007? The, one of the interesting things that come, came out of our studies was that almost every uh, type of response you could imagine uh, is exemplified by some species or another. So there are certain species that I'll refer to birds since they're my expertise. Uh, forest birds like the mountain chickadee and pygmy nuthatch that were really decimated and some chaparral and oak woodland birds like uh, the California thrasher and Hutton's vireo that were decimated and their recovery has been uh, very slow. And then there's other species uh, like the lazuli bunting and black chin sparrow that take advantage of those uh, 
the shrubs, the chaparral that's replaced the forest in the Cuyamaca Mountains and have become far more abundant than they were previously. Okay, and one last quick question, just a word or two from each of you. I'm gonna start with you, Matt. What's one thing that we can do? Is there anything we can do to protect ourselves from future wildfires? Absolutely. Um, there are four main factors associated with wildfires. Uh, it's the environment, um, the management practices on the landscape, the resources used to fight the fire and the staffing used to fight the fires as well. Um, obviously, we're not going to uh, alter the environment and temperature. Uh, you know, we have no real control over that. Uh, managing, you know, 31 acres of the state responsibility area is an incredible challenge, um, but it's the uh, opportunity to put more firefighters and more resources to help fight fires. That's going to be important. Okay. On that note, we have to end. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.